the bow. Okay. Hi there, and today we're going to talk through number 13 Fraser Street in Swinton. Interesting property, got some condition issues. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is get into the sales particulars and just talk through the condition side of things. And one thing that's interesting about, well, many interesting things about this. So firstly, all the properties on this road are cement rendered, which in itself is quite interesting. Um, I guess that's OK. It is what it is. That looks like a bomb site. So in other words, that probably got hit by a bomb in the Second World War because the style of those two properties is very different to the rest of them, I think. Um, and maybe that was also hit by a bomb. This looks like the original layout because of the central window and the way it's all done. Now, the other thing that's interesting about this is a lot of these slates are either quite differently sized or they're loose. I don't know which. And if you look at, say, these slates here, they're all kind of more uniform. I'm inclined to think that this is an original house that is a very old slate roof. That would be my guess on yeah, that. The, and the property is really old. Like yeah, and yeah, and you can see how the roofing on these properties is very different. Also, the windows are different, which says to me it's a different layout. And And again, I go back to this idea that that bombs fell in the war and just like the, the misery in Ukraine or whatever, bombs. And here we are, bomb site, I would imagine. All right. And let's get into the video itself. Nicely, nicely maintained out the front. Nice palm tree. Very pleasant. Above average quality door with double with um, uh, features, you know, like glazing features. Also, this is quite interesting because these kind of features are not economy features in a house. So whenever this place was built, they added these little touches. They didn't have to, but it just gives it a bit more, um, for me, a bit more interest. It just shows me that it's a slightly better than average quality build for the time. Now in here, we've got a few things going on. Down here, there's some damp issues. You can see that because it's got paper lining and there's some damp coming up from underneath. It's uh, it's probably not that serious, but it's just there. It's got the original dado rails, I suspect, in the original ceiling, which also means, therefore, it's probably got the original plaster. Now, from, let's have a quick look at the floor plan. Yeah, so I quite like this layout. And actually, it's a big property for what it is for a two bedroom terraced house. It's a, 100 square meters, which is genuinely quite spacious. Uh, it's 94. 94. Oh, OK, so they got their numbers wrong. Fine. Well, it's yeah, still but, still a yeah, good but, size. Yeah, it's really nice. But uh, when you will check the video and the photos looks perfect, when you will check the video, yeah, you'll go over it because I already saw them. Well, let's it's, use this. Let, let, let's go the virtual tour route because this is actually more helpful and these Matterport ones are the best in my opinion. OK, so uh, let's go to the floor plan. Go to the kitchen first. Just uh, check. So we'll just well, we start where we left off and then we get into all of that. Now, this ceiling looks OK and uh, you can see a crack here, which isn't so encouraging. And that's an original cornice as well. That's probably plaster and lath. And if you're wondering what that is, it's this stuff. So it's strips of wood, plaster squidged up against the, the, the wood, and then it squidges through the wood, and then you get a fix. It's, it, it's OK. If it's done well, it's OK. I don't really know how good it is. I think it's OK, and I don't think it needs replacement. But you can see here, you've got issues with paper lining. Now, this is quite interesting. The fact that it's got this panel door tells me that this property was renovated fairly extensively, probably in the 60s or 70s, because this is the kind of door that they had. If you notice, it's got one of these little ball bearing things. So it's not actually a door and a latch. It's just like a pop door as where it's not great. 
but anyway, that's kind of interesting. Carpets look OK. Uh, and I see that they spent a few quid on an electric fireplace just to make the, the room nicer. So overall, it looks OK, but you have these lurking issues with with the um, damp potentially. And same story here. See, what I think is going on so far is certainly this room, that looks like original cornicing to me, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's the original plaster in this room. Um, that wall looks fairly straight, so it's OK. Obviously, the, the story so far is, is that all of this wall lining needs to be redone. Now we're into the dining room, I guess, and they've blocked up the fireplace. They've got an electric feature fire here. And there are scraps on the fire. Uh, this, that's just marble. That's just a uh, marble effect, you know, because marble oh, has okay. these kind of cracks and things. It's just that's that. Um, but here we have an issue, more damp. Now, the thing about damp up there is it's not rising damp, so therefore, if it's falling damp, it's a problem with a gutter or something like that. Therefore, it's never as serious as rising damp. And the issue with rising damp, of course, is that you have to drill holes in the wall, knock out the plaster, drill holes in the wall, and then uh, redo it all. And you can see some lifted paper here as well. So I would yeah, like I, to see what's going on outside. Uh, now, in uh, this look, room, uh, look, look, on, look under the staircase. Uh, and after the kitchen, the kitchen looks very black as well. Sorry, under the staircase. Are we talking yeah. under the staircase? Uh, here, uh, no, back, 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 back on the left. Yes, here. And above, oh, I you see can, in here. Yeah, this Gosh. is you. Uh, no, you cannot see it here. I guess we right. need the video uh, okay. of YouTube. It's yeah, really bad. the thing about think about an interior like the kitchen one is that it looks a mess. Oops, sorry, I'm kind of running around the place here. Let's go down a floor, shall we? Yep. There we go, and let's go in here. I do love these Matterport things. So this is original plaster work, and this is to me, to me, like the Achilles heel with this property. That in fact, to really make it nice, you have to go back to brick. Brick. And most and houses that we see have done this in their lives, like in the last 50, 60 years, they've done it because it's just one of those big jobs that you just have to do if you want to truly modernize the property. So the big debate with this property is, is it in a good enough location to warrant this kind of renovation? And also the other issue with this kind of stuff is it's what I would call a marginal gain. In other words, that's good if the walls are a little flatter, but you don't really gain anything massive from it other than it feels like a more modern house. So there's a damp issue. There's been a leak somewhere. Anyway, this doesn't really frighten me. It's just it needs finishing and kitchen needs removal and and all of this needs to be plastered properly and then everything put back. But you also have this, which is old. Well, it's how much it's, is it for? Minimum six seven k. Yeah, to do this room properly, probably, properly, probably, something in that order. But the other issue is that you've got this standing thing here, and then you've got this cupboard that's inaccessible. So there's lots of stuff that's just not working right in this kitchen space because it's so small. Um. But it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad property so far. It's just a property that needs reorganization. Yeah, uh, if this is a property because it's a little bit more than asking price it should be. If it can make third bedroom upstairs, this property can be gaining value a lot. Well, let's let's look at because that. It's so, because it's huge. Yeah. See, the other thing is you've got this wall here and if you were able to open that up and put the fridge in there, then that makes the whole kitchen kind of work better. Yep. But ugh, it's just it's one of those slightly intractable things because as a buy to let landlord, what you just want to do is do the minimum work possible, get the maximum impact, as it were, and then off you go. 
Now, this room has had an extensive modernization. And the reason I, I believe that is because if I look at the ceilings, you've got this light beaming here. It's quite flat. And also this cornicing is the kind of stuff, the kind of cornicing that was used from the 1960s. And you buy it in strips, you just stick it on the wall. And so it's not like the cornicing down in the living room, which is very deep set and original. Anyway, that's good. It has the paper chip lining, wall lining, so it's trying to hide some sins. Um, very high ceilings. These walls do look OK to me. I'm not quite sure if it's plaster and lath or not. I, I'm inclined to think that this, it's difficult. Um, by the lack of cornicing, I would say it's plaster and lath. But if I look at this surface here, it's not great. It's quite wavy. And the only way I'd really know is if I went into the loft and had a look down and saw yeah, whether uh, there was plaster strips or not. And this property doesn't have loft insulation because they check it because they don't write any PC assumed. So um, they said yeah. this poor. So basically you need to fix all for the roof. So that's why I'm saying this, this property is like, it have, I, I was thinking around 10K for innovation, but it could go no, up to 20. It's a lot more. Well, it depends. If it's in a, if it's a rough property in Crewe that you're buying for eight, 90,000 pounds, for example, and a lot of properties, by the way, in Crewe are like this, these old terraced houses where they have original walls and stuff. All you do is you just try and hide the problem by putting uh, chipboard walling wallpaper on, and then you just kind of hope for the best. Um, but anyway, they, you know, it's a reasonably nice property. It's just, it, it really does. See, there's another issue with damp. But when you have these kind of problems, it's a gutter issue or it's a, it's a roof issue. Uh, and I'm not too concerned about this kind of thing. It's just that this property needs full redecoration. The other thing I see here on the floor is the floor is relatively smooth. I don't see any floorboards or anything, so I presume that they've got reasonably good underlay. And I th uh, OK, so you can kind of see the floorboards here and here and here, I think. Yeah, you can see the strip. So th this is just the compressed underlay. OK, um, let's see if there are any exterior pictures. And I don't know if there are. And there's the outside rear. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's reasonable quality brick. It's, yeah, it's difficult to really judge it. I think you have to judge these properties kind of in the context of the area. In other words, as I said earlier, a good area demands a good property. Now, this is a that's the this is the original switch that's an I, mean, I say original it's old but i think it's okay they've got a new consumer board there so that's something and you know i quite like the look of this property but i worry about the condition all right let's try this now yeah you can see all of the undulations here so this is original plaster work And if you did the property up, white walls or whatever, you wouldn't consciously notice it, but it would feel kind of old. And that's OK, but. So you could definitely patch this place up and and make it look OK, but the fundamentals are not great. But saying that there are other fundamentals which are great, like it's a big property. And here we are here. Lots of potential damp. Or it just hasn't been decorated in a very long time, which is the other side of it. Now it's got cheap laminate flooring in here, the cheapest basically like kind of Ikea thin flooring. Yeah, it's. I'm inclined to feel that a lot of this paper that's coming off is just old. 
as in you've got that panel door, which is a very 70s thing. So there's a bit of damp in there. That's a gutter issue for sure. Um, it just feels to me like it, it was done in the 70s. It's never been redone properly. They've tried to do the best they can with this house. Uh, yeah, it's just old walls that have never been done, like redone, shall I say. So it's the original plaster from 1890 or whenever this place was built. That would make a very nice downstairs lavatory, by the way. And then we have the kitchen. It obviously needs an needs finishing so they got so far with it and never quite got there and then you've got a leak now that is a external that's an extension and that leak is just again roofing gone bad it's not particularly worrying um so so far this property doesn't feel to me like a disaster condition wise it just needs a lot of attention but the fundamentals are okay uh, the other issue i don't know about is whether it's solid wall or cavity and the reason we don't know that is because the front walls are rendered and therefore you can't see it. now there's that 70s thing so like i said i think this has had a fairly extensive renovation 40 years ago and that wallpaper is very 1970s so that's why a lot of it's peeling off because the owners have never actually dived in and got on with it and sorted the rest of it out. And there was a big crack on the ceiling, but that's just old plaster word. Pl plaster, should I say. It's nothing fundamental. Yeah, it's just very old plaster. So here we are in that bathroom. And Nice big bathroom, vinyl needs replacing. There's our friend in the mirror. And that's quite interesting that you've got cornicing in this room. I presume it looks like it's plasterboarded in this room. You can tell by the straight cracks, i.e. The, the cracks between the, the plasterboard. And that looks to me like a 25 year old bathroom. And again, lots of textured wallpaper and so on. So for me, if this area works out as a kind of an economy area, then yeah, I would just just glue the pa wallpaper back on the walls basically and overpaint everything and hope for the best and replace the carpets. So you can see the carpets uh, are threadbare and uh, you can see the boards there on the ground. You can see them, the strips for the boards. So uh, this is a nicely done video, by the way. So credit to uh, the, the person who did. Now there's there's a good example, that ceiling. I'll just show you, let's go back again. Here's where the plaster and lath has collapsed. Oops. Here's where the plaster and lath has co collapsed. There, it's collapsed at some point. And, and as you know, with plaster and lath, if it gets wet, it can just all fly down. So this is also plaster and lath, and it's been replastered, but it has this kind of dip because it's not as thick as the old plaster, and then they put covering uh, paper on top of it. Just classic stuff, really. It's one of those things. It's just a fundamentally unmodernized property. And a nice big cupboard, looking quite okay. Yeah, all paths for me are leading back to is this the right area to buy in is this the property that that you can really add a lot of value to uh, by maybe readjusting the floor plan and and whatever or is there a lot of value in the fact that it's quite a big property in a really nice location all will be revealed shortly once we get into that um you'd obviously have to replace the doors and there we have oh let's just go back OK, so that's quite interesting. You've got mm. chimney. So what's obviously happened here oops, is that. There is either water coming in through the lead flashing on the chimney, so the chimney, the rain hits the chimney, the rain dribbles down 
and then it kind of leaks through and then it dribbles down through the chimney in the loft and ends up on the ceiling. So I think that's probably what's going on here. So my guess is that the flashing on the chimney needs sorting out. And also what I don't know is how many problems there are on the roof. OK, and there we have. Oh, I s right, OK, so there were probably gutter issues. And water drainage issues there, which meant that the. OK, this is interesting. So you've got the lean to thing going on above the window. And a lot of those slates are in fairly poor condition. So again, it's just a lack of. Real maintenance, and that's why you've got issues with. Water getting in. It's OK, it's just not great, and I just want to go back to the. The thing here, and I want to just look behind the house and just see how that's all set up. Oh, interesting. OK, so they've got this weird setup with the gutter valley here. Well, that explains all the problems. So what would have happened is that leaves or just grunge would have got into the gutter. No one would have gone up there, you know, from one decade to the next, because how would you get up there? And then you get stuff building up and then you get rainstorms and you just get like little pools of water and it slips over the side and in the house. So that's the issue. So I'm not concerned about the damp problems. I just think this property is. Is unmodernized, it's fundamentally unmodernized. Now let's have a look at some of the other stuff. And that gives us a sort of context as to whether this is a really strong area, whether the price is right and, and all of that, I, whether it's worth the renovation. Yeah, maybe I can go for, uh, first to the some suggestions on to the APC and the floor plan. Sure. What I have, so maybe we can share that. Yeah, you, you do. So, so uh, I just want to add that this property, the layout is like this. And because this is enough white 5.3, this can be master bedroom because it's huge anyway. It's four on three meters. It can be master mm -hmm. bedroom. And if you split it on this, I'll just show if you split it in this way where you cannot like. Just here, make a window here. So basically, if you make it this two meters, this will be three meters. So basically, you will have three bedrooms for renting out. You can just add door here. So you so remove basically. that cupboard, you remove that cu cupboard and you make that the door. You don't. Yeah, How do you do that. So uh, you, uh, you, remo uh, you can keep this cupboard because mm -hmm. it's it's enough large. You remove that can, door. Yeah, you remove that door. Just make like this wall. This this the wall. How you make it? And which is the and then the entrance is opposite the other entrance for the yeah. yeah. So here, you got that door and then where's and the other door? Here. I would go first. in the corner. No, no, no. I would yeah, go yeah. in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the yeah. one. Because yeah, then it doesn't you, interrupt uh, any of the space. Yeah, yeah, and you have. It will be enough so you can rent it much better because it needs a lot of renovation. And just think how is the best to approach because um, anyway, if you want under the stage case, if you add a bathroom because you need to. If yeah, you, don't, you could uh, have a little uh, toilet down toilet. there. That would be uh, really good. Yeah, because you need to do a lot of it and then the property will be really lovely. In this condition, in two bedrooms, it's not work. But if you can make it three bedrooms, it really works, and I want to set like this is the one window, and you can you just we need to see yeah. if you can build. Just like everyone um, else has done, like next door, you uh, see they've yeah. got the window there. So if you need do that, it will amazing property. Then it's worth. But before that, I will not. I, as two bedrooms, I will not go for it. I'm just yeah. saying like, just because of the if you add up windows, if you. Uh, make three bedrooms, then even the rent will be, even the price will be because if, uh, because the EPC, I mean, it said that it's 94 meters square. Why to keep it as two bedrooms and can make it three bedrooms for renting? And it will not affect the size because this bedroom can be master bedroom because it's huge, mm. not really huge, huge, but at least it's, it's sizable. Yeah, it's yeah. big enough. Yeah, so this is like my suggestion. Like if I just zoom in, I, I will just make it better. So basically, this will be the wall. This will be the wall, and with the red, I will make the doors. This Do you know, door. this is something that our friend Tony could deal with. Yeah, and this is like the the window. If mm. you so basically, this is what, and you will make it really, really 
lovely this property okay this is so let's let's get back into the yeah, yeah i just want to yeah stuff. i just want to give the guess that's very good yeah. all right i think you're right martin i think it's a very good idea and oddly enough it's one of the few properties we've come across that you could squeeze that extra bedroom into because it's huge that's why so the demographics are quite good around here and there's quite a lot of private rented but it's not excessive 22 percent and quite a lot of a b as well that's promising because oftentimes you have areas with very little a b i.e upper working or upper middle class should i say uh, and it's got a reasonable proportion here a lot of c1 so this is a strong um demographically it's quite a strong area actually and very little local authority and what else can i tell you it is very english speaking it's a kind of slightly older it's like a family area that kind of age group very good very little crime and if we zoom out we can see on this patch so we're looking inside this blue line here and growth is very strong so it has the median house price is 170 which is actually relatively high and we've seen 23 percent growth since 2021 it's very strong throughout the whole area actually and interestingly the the long-term growth is 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 good so it's nearly at the same levels as it was in 2008 which is an interesting sign it tells me that it's very in demand because when an area reaches that kind of par and this is in fact higher than than it was in 2008 very interesting now if i just look at the the numbers overall it's one of the highest capital growth areas in the country and now that's just kind of interesting i'm going to go back here i'm going to look at this whole postcode district exceptional rental demand yeah high turnover yeah. huge growth yeah everything works only the condition worried me but that's well, why when you when you do the condition better to if you change it to three bedrooms then it really works but if you don't change it if you keep it as two bedrooms just I think, it. yeah, it's well, I, I think, the, you know, it's it's a double edged sword. It's it's an incredible opportunity and it's an incredible headache. And it's just which side of that fence you want to go on. Um, OK, over to you, Martin, on on um, location and so on. So I just want to add for the Yeah, as you can see, you have a lot of all, all these properties are three bedrooms. They change it. And so you've you, had a look at the EPC or you've looked yeah, at yeah. sales listings and so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I listed. So this is EPC 94. They said that the, the, it can be C. But basically, if you add a better roof, if you put insulation, and what you need to do is to uh, in, in, to increase the loft insulation, mm -hmm. then the um, quality wall insulation, you can make it C. So and low lighting, you, you can increase. You can replace the boiler. As you can see, the property is well built. So usually without solar panel to receive EPC seed, it's rare. So yes. it means that property is nice. So uh, based on the location, uh, it's like a prime. I want to say it's really close to center of Manchester. You have trainway really close by. You have markets. We, you have uh, wow, gas station. Yeah, you have a lot of green space. So basically, on the location is that's why they're asking a lot. You don't have any uh, um, coal mining issue because the properties on this street you don't have anything around where it is need to be worried. It's far away. So the um, also the, there is no any flood risk. So basically, this property works really well. But the problem is. I'm just giving you how other properties similar make three bedrooms. This is just have opposite floor plan, but this is how it can be made. Right. Same. Property. So basically, you will have 
I, I, I give you the, like, I make it like this, but basically yeah. you can just make a wall here and that's it. And you can make this uh, stellar larger if you want to. And you can have more storage room and you can have here a door and here a door. Oh, so you Step make back. that, you make that cover the storage room for the bedroom. Yeah. 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 Like a walk-in closet, basically. Yeah. 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 Because Very it, nice. You, you can make it in this way. Because if you keep it as two bedrooms, it will not have value. But if you um, if you do it like this, and you have here if you add toilet, mm. it will be it will be rent and it will fly. Okay, well let's talk about comparables then. Yeah. So uh, so I, I think I'm, we the number I'm, one question is how much does it cost to renovate this thing? And since I'm getting more tuned into renovation costs because I'm working with Joe the Builder on estimations and so on, I feel that it's a back to brick job. Like if I was doing this property, I would strip the whole thing out and replaster. I would re just gut the whole damn thing out. I would rip it out and I would start all over again. And I wouldn't replace the floorboards, but I might do floor underfloor insulation for sure. Um, in fact, I would go all the way down. So I'd be like stripping out the floorboards. It's a complete gut out, basically. But if you're doing that, then it's easy to do things like add in the extra bedroom and uh, and and also sort out all the roof issues and the, and so on and so forth. So there's just it's an opportunity, but you, it's all in this one. So let's say that it's at least thirty thousand pounds to do the full back to brick app modernization uh, with adding the extra bedroom. So if you're adding an extra bedroom, then I will go for uh, comparables with extra bedrooms because we're not. So uh, the thirty thousand pounds, by the way. Uh, is is like a high quality renovation so you'd also be redoing the kitchen properly so that it really works and you would um uh you it would be not a premium finish but it would be certainly above economy it would be a nicely done nicely modernized property yeah. so what i guess we're looking for comparables three bed comparables which yeah. have been really well done uh, i think 210 it will be the the asking price if you want this is like comparables but as you can see bedroom or no it's not that doesn't work does it yeah, yeah. downstairs bedroom <laughs> nope i don't think we'll do that yeah as you can see they all everyone do this yeah just but it's just, that's kind of bed sit city that's not a family home you don't do that for a family home yeah so it's the kind of thing if you're in crew or some place where there's a lot of big old houses yes you maximize it by sticking a bedroom downstairs yeah this is like this little bit weird construction mm. let me see outside no no, no it's a very different property so i think okay. we have to look at at nicely done three bed terraces this is like example this is but you have cellar uh, but it's smaller and the, the rooms are really smaller so this is can be comparable it's like 220 okay and this to, but if so you make it really nice like if you make it like this like this property as you can see yeah this is comparable yeah this is yeah. how you suggested firstly like, yeah yeah okay and, they and, they make, uh, and what about the finishing and the quality of the finish and all that See, that's kind of premium. I wouldn't go all the way and do floor to see to seal ceiling tilings in a room in a property like that. It's just too much. Let me check what the, like and here this is like example like. Uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of an extension. The only thing is the floor plan on this property doesn't really work for that kind of thing. So the property we we're looking at a minute ago is the comparable that we can work with. But this is like. I just want so the one that had the layout similar to, you know, the nice layout. Mm -hmm. You had it a moment ago. 
يا بتخوت خلاص خلاص and when was that on offer for 185 but 2020 so you cannot compare let mm. me just uh so like this we will not wait from 2020 from no zero one zero one zero this will give okay let's go with this yeah that's a much grander house though but, but yeah but just to see the floor plan yeah it's similar it just have ensued it's so this extension cost like let's say this is the same size so we can say that it's cost this only cost 20k so let's say 150 let's mm. check this one this is the freshest but this is not the same type of house but the floor the third bedroom is in the loft yeah. not, not comparable okay so what well, do you I think this property would sell for if in optimal condition this is what would it value at more to the point uh if you i i this was the property just taking uh floor plan yeah but this have seller so okay so let's just go to to rental comparables and then we can work out yield so what do you think it's worth if done up properly this remembering the, huh it will run for around 97 one, 950 975 okay and what will it be worth what would it value uh, at 210 220 okay so that's not a great yield is it but uh what's the yield look, but now the cost uh, for the property is 160 um, plus 30k renovation and plus 10k for beating so that's 200 mm -hmm. let's say so um, 100 per 1000 per 12 like 2000 so six percent of yield which works it's a lot of hassle okay yeah that's the issue with this property it is hassle for the yield so let me check it but this. it's that thing about if this i think it was this oh. okay well we're kind of there anyway so so should we score this thing up and then draw this is this is like one e example mm. but imagine that our our property is bigger than yeah this. yeah and this 190 asking so uh, it, it will go up to this, I guess, under offer. So mm. let me check. My feeling with this property is it's it's a very strong area, but it's it's not a... So I'm going to share my screen, if I may, and then we can yeah. draw this to a close. Yeah. All right. I think that it is a nice house in a reasonably nice location like quiet spot with the church nearby and there's no no houses overlooking and all of that and that makes it quite nice um and it's very close to shops and all of that this isn't the best terrace it's all a bit ugly and a bit all over the place and i think if it had three beds it feels to me like it's a two hundred thousand pound house would you agree with yeah. that yeah, yeah, around 200, 210. Okay. And I think with the growth profile around here, it's very strong and promises to increase over time. And if you make it a nice family house and you do it up well, in other words, you put 30 grand into it, then then I think it works. So for condition, I'm going to give it a 2.5. It's quite low. In fact, I'm going to go for two because it really needs ripping out and redoing. Location, Martin? I think four, four to five. It's very nice. It's basically... Area? Um, area? I think it's uh, a good area, area. It's four, it's four. Yeah, four, around four to one. Crime is low. Uh, yeah. Demographics are good. 
I'm going to yeah, go it's, 4.2. It, it's the, the only issue is that this terrace isn't the best uh, quality of housing in that area. Uh, and therefore, you know, you do have that issue with this, but the demographics are good around there. The capital growth is really strong and sell time. Well, yeah, it will, generally it it'll sell quickly. Is it the right price? No. 3.5. And will it rent quickly? Of course. Yes. The yield is acceptable at four. Would you say? Mm. Not four uh, percent, yeah, uh, but you know, if it's you, a decent If you yield. make, if you make it three bedrooms, yes, the yield will work. If, if you, you make get it, it at the right price, etc. So I'm just yeah, going to say so it's a decent yield. Three so it's over four. No, yeah. it's okay. So I want to set like if you rent it for as a two bedrooms, you will rent it for eight fifty. And if mm. you rent it as three bedrooms, you will rent it for one thousand. So it, because, it's only viable if you're prepared to take on the large building project. Okay, let's uh, draw to conclu conclusion. So overall, it's a um, it's a it's an interesting property. It has never been deeply modernized, as you see. It's a back to brick. In a way, that's OK, because if you're going to reconfigure the footprint of the property, then you, you, you know, it's OK to go back to brick, basically, because it's going to be lots of disruption in any event. And I think it's borderline as to whether the, the quality of the property warrants such a deep renovation. In other words, if that was a more handsome looking house without the cement render, if it was a good looking little street, with a nice, pretty row of houses that would would really attract a kind of premium buyer, then I would say, yeah, it's worth it. But for me, it's kind of borderline. I just don't think it's a particularly good looking terrace. And um, I think the amount of hassle for, 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 for an okay yield, it's just not quite there for me. So that's my opinion. You know, on the scores, it comes up above average. But the big caveat is, do you want to go through all the aggravation of a huge renovation or not? Yeah. What's your this opinion, is, Martin? Yeah, 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 I will go only if I change it to three bedrooms because it can be. Yeah, it has possible. to be. You'd, so it's all in on a deep renovation or nothing. And then the question is, is it worth a huge renovation? Well, it is if you get the property cheap enough. So I think if you're interested in offering, I would go in at say one, I'd be fairly cheeky, not cheeky, but I would just explain that it needs a vast amount of work and that it's only worth offering. 162. Well, no, I would go lower than that. Um, the thing is, the bigger the renovation, the more risk you carry. So therefore, because this is like a big renovation, I- Not thinking 160. I, you'd have to get more than a one-to-one -one return. So in other words, normally with a light renovation or a basic deep you know, paint and decorate, et cetera, you'd expect a one-to-one. -one. So you put in 10 grand to make it all nice and tidy, you get 10 grand extra value on the property. But the greater the risk you suffer or, or expose yourself on for a bigger renovation, you have to get a more than one-to-one -one return. You have to get like a one to 1.2 or even 1.3. So you put in 30, you expect to get 40 back in terms of value uplift or even 45. So at 160, then you sink in four, uh, 30, you should be getting 205 to 10 as a as a valuation on the set on the property. So if you say that the property in good condition is worth 200, then really, in theory, you should only offer 150 on it because of the risks of the size of the renovation. Maybe one, uh, 155. So. Maybe. I think you could max at 155, but I'd be inclined to go in at 150. I wouldn't be chasing this one down just because it's it's risk. got all that risk. So that's my opinion. What's your final opinion? Yeah. As I said, I will not offer more than 162. So. Okay. Very good. All right, there we but are. But if you make it three bedrooms, if you make it two bedrooms. It has to be I three will... beds. It's a three yeah. beds or nothing. So it's a yeah. big renovation or nothing. So that's that. All right. Uh, and of course, we can do the renovation. It's just, yeah. it's 
just a renovation and uh, we which have, I've done a few of like this yeah so uh, maybe uh, and we have a uh, interior designer also who can help for that not only Joe because but we'll yeah, talk about yeah, next, yeah, time, yeah, next yeah. time about that so. so if any of you if you are if you are serious about this if you show a serious expression of interest we can we can maybe prevail upon the interior designer to talk about floor plans and alternative layouts because it needs a bit more than just me and Martin yeah. on that side. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.